Tonight, stunning new images revealing the atrocities waged by the terror group Boko Haram on Nigerians last week. You remember, of course, the campaign to bring back our girls when the group kidnapped 300 girls last year. Now, on the same day of the Paris attacks, terrorists stormed several villages, killing 2,000 people using girls as suicide bombers. Amnesty International releasing these satellite pictures. On top, before the attack, you can see densely packed fields. Red areas show healthy vegetation. And look at the bottom picture. Parched earth, ravaged and burned by Boko Haram. The top, on top, the villagers' homes remain intact. Their roofs are visible, but below, after last week's attack, those structures, as you can see, if you look uh, very closely, I know these images are kind of hard to read, but on the bottom, uh, so many of them just simply wiped out. The dark spots show burned out areas in those villages. Tara Maller is a former military analyst for the CIA, and she joins us now with her thoughts on all of this. Tara, good to have you here this morning. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Martha. You know, this is a group that uh, has not been on the horizon for all that long, uh, maybe a few years, but they seem to be raising their profile dramatically. What's going on here? Absolutely. Boko Haram was only put on the State Department foreign terrorist organization list in 2013. So while it was committing violence before then, only recently designated, and over the last year we've seen a dramatic increase in the deadliness of the attacks and the number of attacks. They used to be smaller level attacks, mostly targeting churches and schools within Nigeria. And now in the latest news that we just, you just reported on, we see satellite imagery showing the devastation, basically, of small towns in northeastern Nigeria. You know, we all remember uh, the national outcry and the Twitter campaigns for Bring Back Our Girls. Even the First Lady uh, held up that sign that you see in the picture, Bring Back Our Girls. And it seemed to just drift away. It seemed like everyone just sort of forgot about it. And now these reports that... Perhaps some of these young women have been used as suicide bombers in these attacks. Yes, there have been reports of that recently, and we've seen the administration actually this morning, Secretary Kerry uh, from Bulgaria making strong statements about new initiatives that will need to be taken against the deadly attacks and the violence being carried out by Boko Haram. Now, understandably, this area is remote and there's not as much information and access to this area, so the reports have been trickling out over the past couple of days, and the severity of the attack while reported, you know, er, in January 3rd, 4th, the verification through the satellite imagery not released by Amnesty International till today. Quite contra you can contrast this to the, you know, the Paris attacks, which unfolded basically on social media with photos for the entire world to see, um, basically in real time. So the informational differences might account for why, you know, there's more attention being focused on this now this week. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, but when you look at the numbers and you look at the scale of what's going on here, it is obviously something that the world's attention needs to be brought to, which is exactly why we're talking about it, frankly, uh, today, because we want to get this story out here. Let's talk about, about these sleeper cells uh, and, you know, the activity that we saw coming out of Cincinnati, this young man who apparently was an ISIS sympathizer, and you combine that with what happened in Paris. What are you sensing in terms of, of our intelligence, what we know about these sleeper cells and how active they might become? Sure. The sleeper cell issue is not a new issue. It's something that U.S. law enforcement and the intelligence community have been focused on. Lone wolf sleeper cells with varying levels of connections to groups like al-Qaeda, um, both AQAP and groups like ISIS. I think what's interesting about the recent attack, which has caused people some, you know, a, an extra look, is that the individuals in the Paris attacks, you know, one was claiming ties and loyalties and potential connections to al-Qaeda, um, AQAP, and the other also had some sympathies for ISIS, groups that traditionally aren't coordinating and orchestrating, you know, at the, at the senior leadership level. So it shows that, like, the inspiration for the attack and the motivations for the attack and the direction don't necessarily need to come from the same place. Mm -hmm. These can be mixed cases. So I think law enforcement is trying to really dissect how much sponsorship was there from leadership of these organizations. Mm -hmm. How much was it just inspiration and how much of it was, you know, actually directed or funded from overseas? Yeah. And I know you talk about the chain that needs to be there, that can, needs to connect these dots and how important law enforcement and local law enforcement is in uh, detecting all of this. But I want to ask you one question about the connection between them, because we've heard both from this, you know, 20 year old in Cincinnati, Ohio, as well as the Paris attackers who unfortunately were able to carry out their attack, that they were acting on the orders and plans of al-Awlaki. He's been dead since 2011. How much right. credence do you give to the, the possibility that he had plans, projects that he wanted carried out over the next several years as they were able? Well, 
I don't want to sound like a politician, but it almost depends on what you define the definition of ordered to mean. I mean, if, if they're talking about potential contact they did have with um, you know, Anwar Awlaki in the past occasions about doing these types of attacks of a general sort of direction, you know, that's very possible because there have been reports that they did have ties and did travel to Yemen. If you're talking about, you know, current direction from him, obviously not. He's been dead. So, you know, it, it could be that the, the seeds were planted a while back. Something else, you know, in, a, in the last few months inspired them more directly. It's not necessarily an either or case. It's very possible they were inspired by higher level leadership at a previous point in time. Mm -hmm. And it's very possible that on their own, they took the initiative to carry these out. It, it's also possible that leadership has let gr let smaller cells like this do the operations on their own with more autonomy in order to avoid being detected by law enforcement. Yeah. The more yeah. communication you have overseas, the more likely you are to get caught. Absolutely. And, and to pull off more things. You know, if you're ready to go, go, as we have heard them uh, communicate in the past. Uh, Tara, right. thank you so much. Great to have you thank with you. us today. Thanks a lot, Martha.